Welcome. My name is Dr. Mary Schroth, and I am the Chief Medical Officer at Care SMA. This video is part of a series designed to educate the child neurology community, including caregivers, providers, and advocates about spinal muscular atrophy, or SMA. This video is created by the Child Neurology Foundation in collaboration with Care SMA. These sessions bring together a caregiver and a provider to have a candid conversation and provide their expert advice about SMA. In today's video, we will address the question, what is SMA? Joining me are Dr. John Bransama, neuromuscular section head at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, and Dr. Al Friedman, a licensed, a licensed counseling psychologist and dad to Jack, a young man living with SMA. Welcome, and thanks for joining me today. Thank you very much, Mary. It's such a pleasure to talk SMA at any time for me, and I'm just so thrilled to be here. Thank you both, Mary and John, for including me and uh, the opportunity to share my son's story and to collaborate with you on behalf of the SMA community. John, well, why don't we begin by having you talk as a physician about SMA. Um, can you help us understand what SMA is, how it affects the motor nerve cells and, and the different types of SMA? Sure. Um, so SMA um, is a broad group of disorders in neurology, but we're usually talking about the most common form of it, which is what we call 5Q SMA. Um, and this is a nerve cell disease that affects what are called motor neurons, which live in the spinal cord and the brainstem. Unfortunately for people living with SMA, after the time that they develop symptoms, the disease usually progresses relentlessly from that point without treatment. And so what you'll notice is weakness, um, primarily of the limbs in all patients. And then as you see more severe forms, it also will involve breathing muscles and swallowing and speaking muscles. Um, this is a fairly rare disease, but it's not vanishingly rare. We see it about one in 10,000 live births in the United States. Um, and being a carrier for this disease, because it is genetic, is even more common. Approximately one in 50 people in the United States are carriers for SMA. Um, the way that this works genetically is that uh, people with SMA are missing both copies of a gene called SMN1. And SMN1 is very important for making a protein called survival motor neuron protein that the nerve cells need to be healthy. Um, because the, uh, someone has SMA, they have both copies of this SMN1 missing. Um, and so they're reliant on a related gene called SMN2, which is kind of a backup gene. It's very similar to SMN1, but it doesn't make that protein nearly as well, only about 10% efficiency. So if you have more copies of SMN2, you're more likely to have a milder experience of the disease. If you have fewer copies of SMN2, you're more likely to present early. And in terms of how we classify this disorder, um, this has really been done historically by the maximum function someone achieves before they start to lose their strength over time. Um, and so unfortunately, the most common form of this is the infantile onset form where babies will present with symptoms before they're even able to sit and never achieve that ability over time. That's about two thirds of, of presentations with SMA. Um, and there are milder forms uh, where you sit first, but never achieve walking, that's type two. And then type three would be being able to take steps at some point in your life, um, but maybe losing that ability over time as you um, have progression of your disease. It's very important when you have SMA to be working with an interdisciplinary care team to ensure that we're supporting all of the things that you may need, both from your motor function, but also related to breathing and nutrition and all of the other aspects of this disease that can affect you. Um, but the other exciting thing that we have nowadays are treatments, which will change this trajectory for patients. And so we can't really use this classical system any longer um, because um, people change in their categories with treatment, sometimes gaining function. Um, so we'll tend to refer to non-sitters, sitters, and walkers with SMA. And uh, that gives us an idea of all of the other associated things that may be going on. Um, but I know your family uh, um, went through the process of experiencing symptoms in your baby and, and seeking care. And I wonder if you remember what led you to seek attention for Jack when he was a young one. Thanks, John. Yes, uh, families like mine never forget what leads to uh, doctors like you and the world of SMA. 
um, when Jack was a baby, he was born healthy. Um, and this was a time 25 years ago, well before babies were screened, uh, newborn screening didn't exist. So we didn't know there was anything unusual about him until his six month um, pediatrician check-in. And at the time, a pediatrician who observed Jack saw that he wasn't sitting up and rolling over the way that normal six month old babies do. And from that point, we were referred to a professional like you, a child neurologist. And uh, a few days after that six month checkup, we were told that Jack uh, had SMA, that he, he wasn't sitting up, he wasn't rolling over. And uh, he does have two copies of the gene you just mentioned, and he's a non-sitter. Uh, so we've had uh, a, a journey over these years uh, since that time of diagnosis, very consistent with what you've described and uh, very grateful for the doctors who helped us then and who help us now. And very lucky that my son is still here 25 years later. So I think it's important to understand that um, when we know somebody has SMA, there's still a lot we can do to improve their quality of life, even without the targeted treatments that have been developed. Um, but now that we have treatments available, it's very important to identify people as early as possible. And that's why we'll talk in the subsequent videos about newborn screening and about early identification of symptoms um, so that we can ensure that people get access to care as soon as possible and have the best possible life living with SMA. I'll now transition back to Nikki from the Child Neurology Foundation. Thank you, John and Al. Um, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your expertise uh, with the child neurology community. For more resources and the additional videos that uh, John mentioned, check out CNS website at childneurologyfoundation.org and CureSMA's website at curesma.org. And together, we are all child neurology. <laughs>